Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. My name is Stuart Mullen. I'm the Chief Operating Officer at the Global Wind Energy Council. And on behalf of the Global Wind Energy Council, Wind Europe and RWE Renewables, I'd like to thank you for coming to the opening of the Global Markets Theatre here in Bilbao. For those of you online, uh, we've got a couple of three very interesting days full of lots of discussions and it's our ambition to take what's happening here in the exhibition halls of Bilbao and take it and turn it into some uh, global messaging and, and get, let everyone experience this. So regardless if you could come to Bilbao or not, we hope that you enjoy the program. Uh, the first person that I would like to bring onto stage today is uh, Robert Navarro, the country chair of Spain at RWE Renewables. So Robert, if you would like to come here on behalf of RWE, say a few words. Thank you. If you could make him welcome, please. So good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this beautiful country and this fantastic city, which I hope you will be able to enjoy, uh, although probably your agenda will be quite crowded. But uh, if you can spare some time to know the area, you will not regret it, I assure you. My name has been said, Robert Navarro, country chair for Spain for other EU renewables. Uh, and we are really glad to sponsor this uh, global market theater for the second straight time. And we hope you will enjoy the program that has been put together, together with the Global Wind Energy Council, we in Europe and ourselves about global markets as well as developments in renewables. I hope we can share thoughts and learn lots of useful and interesting things together. I want also to say a few words in order to sympathize with the shocking and dramatic situation in Ukraine. Very sad and terrible things are taking place there with lots of casualties and human suffering. And this also creates new challenges and triggers Europe rethinking about what to do in terms of energy. Renewable sources in general and wind energy in particular will be key for the solution. So we are consequently expected and needed to be there and make things happen. A lot has been done over the past decades, but a lot more has to be done over the next years to ensure a solid, competitive, sustainable, and reliable energy landscape for our continent. Let's join forces together towards this common goal, overcoming any difficulties we may encounter along the way. Therefore, we need to use this conference to discuss, as an industry, the solutions and how you can deliver the needed capacity within the tight time frame. It won't be easy, but it must be done, and it can be done. I am very happy, then, for the opportunity in the incoming days to discuss all these matters with all of you, or at least many of you, and address this huge challenge here together. So I hope you will enjoy the exhibition, the conferences, the networking opportunities, and also the fantastic environment. And please do not forget to visit our stand across the hall and speak to me and my colleagues. We will be extremely happy to welcome you. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much, Robert, uh, for those uh, remarks. And it's interesting that you mentioned the Ukraine. We are having a session, a special session on the Ukraine uh, this afternoon. It wasn't in the programs as it was just uh, put into the program after the program went to print, but we will be having that at 4.15 this afternoon. And it'll run from 4.15 till uh, 5.15 this afternoon. And we also look forward to having many RWE Renewable colleagues uh, join us in various panels throughout the, the uh, next three days. Our next speaker for today is CEO of the Global Wind Energy Council, Mr. Ben Backwell, who will also give his opening remarks. Ben, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much, uh, Stuart. Thank you, uh, Robert. It's really nice to be back in Bilbao after three years uh, since I stood uh, very close to this uh, spot and back in this uh, beautiful uh, city. And it's great to see all of you 
uh, here. Um, we at GWET launched the Global Wind Report uh, yesterday at the Iberdrola uh, Tower uh, just downtown. Um, and it, it's been um, another really stellar year for the wind industry um, with near record growth again, um, record levels of, of annual installations. Um, and, and, and really this is the kind of new normal um, in terms of, of, of where we are as an industry. Um, and we are in a world now where the commitments um, that have been made at COP26, um, the commitments around net zero really present us with an unprecedented opportunity uh, but also an unprecedented uh, challenge uh, to really scale up and be um, one of the key solutions um, in the next 20 and 30 um, and 40 years. And, and most, uh, the, the greater part of this growth is going to come from global uh, markets. Um, the greatest single region for growth um, will be Asia because of um, very high economic growth and, and uh, uh, pop populations and, and very high energy growth. And GWEC is working along with our partners um, all over uh, Asia, Latin America, um, Africa and other markets to really try and um, speed up and accelerate um, the development. Um, we, we have a kind of window of opportunity ahead of us where the world you know, has clear targets and a clear vision ahead of it, but we're not um, um, completely clear how we get there. And this is really, I think, something for us to, as an industry, to um, take um, a, a proactive approach to really go out and talk to governments and communities and see how we can um, uh, create this huge uh, human and industrial capital that we're going to need to uh, to deploy quickly. Um, both Robert and Stuart made reference to Ukraine. I mean, the tragic um, invasion of Ukraine by Russia um, has really put us in a new place, I think. Um, but it's important to realize that the energy crisis was already happening even before Ukraine. So we saw this steady increase in um, gas prices through the whole of 2021, um, but also coal prices um, in Asia, where many of the markets that we work in are double uh, the level. There's been industry shutdowns um, in places like China. Um, this is a global energy crisis. And I think with all crises, um, you know, it's, it's a challenge, but it's also an opportunity. We are in a new world now. We're in a new energy world. Um, and, I, and I just want to go in very quickly what I mean by that. Um, on the one hand, um, energy prices um, are at unprecedented levels, and there's no particular reason to imagine that they're going to be going down anytime sooner. So this creates all kinds of um, opportunities for us. And I, you know, I don't like to use the word opportunity in such a difficult um, situation, but it, it, it is an opportunity and one that we have a duty uh, to step into um, and provide energy that's affordable um, for uh, consumers and for industry and really help be a solution um, to this crisis. Um, so I think uh, the higher energy prices around the world create a new world for us as an industry, but we're also in a new world with our own uh, costs and challenges as well. I mean, as you know, um, commodity prices have been going up steadily for um, a year and a half. Um, you know, steel, copper, rare earth metals are all much more expensive. And I think we need to, in a way, tear up a little bit the assumptions that we're used to. Um, you know, we're used to a world where we can continually point to our costs uh, going down and f uh, further every single year. It's, we're not necessarily in that world anymore, and I personally don't think we are in that world. But we're much uh, uh, more competitive than fossil fuels and we're a much better and efficient uh, solution for people. So I think that's, that's the new conversation we need to have and it's a conversation that we're going to be having in this global markets theatre um, looking at um, Latin America, looking at Asia, looking at the US market. Um, as as uh, Stuart said, there's a special session on Ukraine uh, later this afternoon. We really want to engage um, with the different dynamics of the energy market around the world and how we can um, fit into that and provide uh, solutions um, as an industry. So thank you um, without further ado for coming to this. I really look forward to discussing uh, with you and engaging with you in these uh, um, uh, discussions. Thank you to RWE and Win Europe, our uh, partners in this global markets theatre. Um, we also um, are having uh, drinks uh, at 5.15 as well. You're all welcome to come and have a drink afterwards and discuss uh, what we've seen uh, this afternoon. Um, and I'd also uh, like to point also to um, our COP27 uh, stand as well. Many of our companies banded together for COP26 and made a really 
strong and decisive in intervention at COP26. We want to be doing the same in Egypt at COP27. Um, I was in Egypt meeting with ministers uh, just a few weeks ago. Um, it's really, really important that we're there as a, as a solution um, and, and showing the way forward. So um, welcome and I'm going to hand it over to Stuart again uh, for the rest of the session. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much, Ben. Uh, we have a ceremony to actually do now, and so I would like to uh, call to the stage uh, champion kite surfer and GWIC ambassador, Lewis Cratham. And director of corporate development, Vern Bugden from uh, Sedna Wind. Thank you, and uh, if we can have the painting, please. So, Lewis, I'll hand the microphone to you first. Maybe you would uh, like to give you, uh, everyone a little bit of introduction as to who Lewis Cratham, champion kite surfer, is. One, two. Yep. Um, thank you very much, Stuart. I'm Lewis Cratham, a professional kite surfer, and I am an ambassador for GWEC. And I use kite surfing, which is an incredible sport. There's my kite over there. I have my branded boards. And for me, I think it's the most amazing way to engage with a new generation, with young people, young and old. It's a very visual sport. It's going to be included into the Olympics as well. And really, there's no better way that you can give the message of the power of the wind than to put it into people's hands. And that's something that I like to do with young people and young kids. And it's great to have that support with GWEC, who support me both at a professional level, competing around the world, and being at events like this, it's very exciting for me. But we do have a picture to hand over in just a moment, but I'm first going to pass you over here. Thank you, Lewis. Uh, my name is Vern Bigden. I'm with Sedna Wind. Uh, we are making corporate acquisitions, uh, developing a portfolio of firms to service the offshore wind industry. And by doing so, we seek to make them uh, more reliable and more efficient uh, to help bring uh, clean energy to the world. Thank you. And so without any further ado, I believe you are the winner of this uh, picture here. Can I show everybody? So we would like to present this uh, painting to you. So very well done and congratulations. There you go. Round of applause, everybody. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, Lewis and Vern. And so th this is, of course, not the actual painting. Uh, normally when people make a donation, you know, they come with big checks. We've actually reversed it. We have a big painting which we've scaled down for uh, simplicity's sake in order to get this out. But uh, thank you very much for Sedna Wind for your support of the Global Wind Energy Council and the Women in Wind program which they will support. And thank you, Lewis, for making this presentation. So this concludes uh, this, the opening session. In about 15 minutes from now, we'll be kicking off the first of today's presentations, which is a deep dive into the US, where we're going to start off with a look at what happened onshore last year, and then a panel discussion that's going to take us behind the scenes with some of the experts that are going to make sense of the New York Bite auction. So thank you very much for joining us, and so thank you very much for those in the audience and those joining online. We look forward to seeing you again in 15 minutes' time. Thank you very much. Uh, we'll probably get a photo over.